Good morning. May we proceed with worship. We do give honor and respect to President Dr. Lester C. Newman, to the Provost Dr. Pruitt, Dr. Richardson, to the Cabinet, to the faculty, staff, and students. We are excited today to be here at this hour. And we're going to proceed with the program as printed. We're going to ask the song of praise and worship to be done by the Student Ministry Association Praise Team. And then we will proceed as the program is printed. Put your hands together for the Lord if you know he's good. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do because I need you more and more. Say, I'm chasing after you, no matter what, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what, cause I need you more and more, say more and more. More and more, say more and more, say more and more. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my. Just to be closer to you, I'm chasing after you, say I'm chasing after, praising my way through, yeah, yeah, just to be closer to you. Chasing after you. Say I'm chasing after you. Praising my way through, yeah, yeah. Just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you, yeah, yeah. More and more, more and more, more and more, say more and more. Hallelujah. Give God some hand claps. Good morning. I'll be reading a scripture from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 7 through 11. So here is what you should do. Go and enjoy your meals, drink your wine, and love every minute of it, because God is already pleased with what you do. Dress your best, and don't forget a splash of scented fragrance. Enjoy life with the person you love. Cherish every moment of the fleeting life which God has given you under the sun. 
for this is your lot in life. You're a great reward for all your hard work under the sun. Whatever you find to do, do it well, because where you are going, the grave, there will be no working or thinking or knowing wisdom. I turn and witness something else under the sun. The race does not always go to the swift. The battle is not always won by the strong. Bread does not always fill the table of the wise. Wealth does not always accrue to the skillful. And favor is not always granted to the knowledgeable. But time is misfortune happened to them all. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Saints. All right. My name is Ria Hubbard. I'll be praying over the service today. God, we come to you as humbly as we know how. And before we ask for anything, we thank you for everything. We come asking that you bless us with your presence on today. We ask that for your divine wisdom and understanding. Bless us as followers of your word to be able to please you more and better, oh God. We ask that you bless this man of God as he comes up to preach your word and your gospel, that he may be invisible and that we just see and hear you through him. <sighs> Make him and all of us pure and living sacrifices, that we may live a life that glorifies you. Bless our leadership to better lead us towards you. Bless our choir to sing your praises all for your glory. And bless us as a congregation and as a student body to learn of you and live for you and better understand all that you have said and spoken. Last but not least, we thank you for all you have done in our lives, on our campus, and all you are planning to do. Make this a real and true revival of God. Revive our spirits and resurrect our faith in you. For it is your will and your way and no one else's. Help us to be able to submit to you and your way for our lives. Bless our grades, bless our staff, and bless us with the drive and determination to do well both in the natural and the spiritual, to have a life and live it more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Dr. Newman, administration, faculty, staff, alumni, and students of Jarvis Christian University. To our special guests, Pastor Bertram Bailey Jr. and any other guests in the sanctuary or online. The announcements are, from the Office of the Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Honors Convocation is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Appropriate attire and a regalia is expected. Join the Student Ministry Association for the Revival Service on Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Smith Howard Chapel with our guest preacher, Pastor Patron Bailey Jr. From Dr. Cheryl Karayuki, Honors, Co Honors Convocation 2023 is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 during chapel. The mandatory meeting and rehearsal is Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 at 4 p.m. in the Smith Howard Chapel Sanctuary. All dean lists, distinguished scholars, and presidential scholars are required to attend the meeting. To receive information pertaining to honors convocation and the pending ceremony for new members of the Barbara C. Jordan Honors Program, it is imperative that you be at this meeting. From the Office of the Registrar to all graduating seniors, there will be an information graduation meeting for all seniors Tuesday, April 18th, 2023 at 5 p.m. with Dr. Glenel Lee Pruitt in the Mayo Auditorium. From Dr. Holman, take advantage of this amazing summer opportunity. If you are interested in serving as a paramentor this summer at Jarvis Christian University, submit your application before the deadline of April 12, 2023. For more information, call or email Dr. Holman, extension 4001, or at aholman at jarvis.edu. Dr. Keisha James and the Office of Counseling Services invites all students to participate in the Unapologetically Free, a virtual student conference on mental health. This virtual conference is April 11th and April 12th. Register for the conference at unapologeticallyfree.org. Contact Dr. James for more information. Thank you. Good morning. I will be giving the introduction to our speaker, Pastor Bertrand Maurice Bailey Jr., a native of Tulsa, Oklahoma, now residing in Mount Pleasant, Texas. As a young child, he was blessed to grow up in a family filled with pastors, teachers, evangelists, and psalmists. His mother and father instilled Christian values in him, and he accepted his Christ and his personal savior at an early age, accepted his calling to the ministry at the age of 18. He attended Oklahoma Baptist University and Oklahoma School of Religion, and is a graduate of Liberty University, where he earned his degree in biblical studies. Pastor Bailey is a servant of the highest God and senior pastor of Greater Bible Way Baptist Church and New Greenwood Baptist Church. He earned his reputation of being a dynamic, expiratory preacher, causing him to be sought after evangelists and pulpits across the nation. He has spread the gospel all over the United States, the Bahamas, and the Virgin Islands. He has also been blessed to spread the word internationally, appearing on the Word Network and the local radio broadcast. He loved teaching, singing, and, pre and preaching in the word of God. He is grateful to be, he is grateful to God for keeping and blessing him, traveling the word to spread the gospel via, via YouTube with more than 300,000 300, views. Pastor Bailey is an anointed preacher, teacher, and singer who has shared the stage with Zacardi Cortez, Timothy Rogers, Marvin Sapp, Mar Marvin Wayne, Wayne, Vicky Wayne, and now renowned Sherlyn Caesar. He has preached alongside of Dr. E. Dewey, Smith, Kimber Burrell, Frank Ray and John Adolf. He based his life on collisions 3, 23, and 24. So no matter what you, so no matter what your task is, work hard, always do your best, and the Lord's servant and not as man's. Because you know your reward is the Lord's inheritance, you serve the Lord. Pastor Bailey is married to Victoria Bailey and father of three, Camille, Bertrand III, and Zachariah. Thank you.
the dress and go to Sunday school. That's where I learned about the golden rule. Learned what God would have me to do. Praise Him for all He's brought me through. Sunday morning, every day, every day, every day. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, yeah. When I reflect upon the good old days, I gotta go and give the Lord some praise. Can't help it when my hands raise. When I think about my soul, it's saved. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I can't wait. Sunday morning, I can't wait. Sunday morning, I can't wait. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, oh, Sunday morning. Oh, thank you, dear, thank you, dear. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, yeah. I've been having hell all week. But the Lord still to care me. Church is where I need to be. Another word from the Lord I need. Sunday morning. Have a bell. Have a bell. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta go and pay my tithe. Do what I know when my heart is right. He stuck by me through the darkest night. Not only that, he spared my life Sunday morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday morning, I can't wait. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday morning. Hey, oh, thank you, dear. Sunday morning, Sunday morning. I got to enter into his coats with the thanksgiving. I got to praise him through it all because I'm still living. I should have been dead a long time ago. Stretched out with bullet wounds on somebody's flow. Here I am in the church house once again. I got to stand up on my feet. I got to clap my hand. You can sit there if you want to, but I got to go. When I think about his goodness, I'm going to let it show. So you can slide over, give me a little space because I start to get happy when I think about his grace as my mind reflects upon them hard times every time I got a nickel had to spend a dime I get choked up and I have to cough when I think about those times my water was off but somehow the Lord he got it turned back on and provided every need I had in my home Sunday morning Sunday morning Sunday morning Sunday morning, Sunday morning, oh, Sunday morning, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Sunday morning, hey, yeah, yeah, early one Sunday morning, breakfast was on the table, there was no time to eat she said to me boy hurry to sunday school fill with the love of glory yeah. we learned the whole story oh, make a deal. she'll always have her dreams Despite this dream, this trouble world may bring Sunday morning, Sunday morning, the 
only thing that keeps me up when I'm feeling down. I don't know about you, I'm glad that he's around. I done looked, I done searched, and it's hard to find another savior like mine. See me, yes, I'm addicted to how we kick it. Everything you say to me, never knew I could be so wicked. Hoping that you stay with me, searched around the world, you will never find another savior like mine. See me like mine. Come on, give God some praise. Lord, they've come to chapel to see you. They've come to hear from you. They've come for a word from you. Use your boy as an instrument that we may know what you would have us to know. And then, Lord, help us do all that you've called us to do. When it's all said and done, we pray the lost will come to you. We pray that your children will be more like you. Pray that you get all the glory, you get all the honor, for you alone are worthy of all praise. Have your way. In the saving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you. Amen. Come on, give God a rousing round. Give the person next to you a little bump and just tell them I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're sitting by me. The president, Dr. Lester C. Newman and his staff, we honor you. Pastor Cedric Dinkins, my beloved brother and friend. Dr. Richardson, Dr. Pruitt, Dr. Atkins. Dr. Mark Hood, Liberty Baptist Church, Tyler, Texas, my brother and friend, thank God for you. And the student body of world changers, I thank God for all of you. The Lord changed my message while I was sitting there. St. John chapter one, verse 14. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And then 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. My brothers and my sisters, it happened. It happened in a moment. It was a remarkable moment, just like the moments that have just passed while you hear these words. It came and it went. It was proceeded and succeeded by many moments just like it. It was one of the countless moments that have marked time since eternity became measurable. But in reality, that moment was like none other. Through the segment of time, a spectacular thing occurred. God became man. God became man. While the creatures of earth walked unaware, divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself and placed her most precious one in a human womb. The omnipotent became breakable. He who had been spirit became pierceable. He who is larger than the universe became an embryo. He who sustains the world with a word chose to be dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. God as a fetus. Holiness sleeping in a womb. The creator being created. God was given eyebrows, elbows, two kidneys and a spleen. He stretched against the walls and floated in the amniotic fluids of his mother. God came near. Not as a flash of light, as an unapproachable conqueror, but as one whose first cries were heard by a peasant girl and a sleepy carpenter. The hands that first held my Lord were collapsed. 
unmanicured. No silk, no ivory, no hype, no hoopla, no party. Were it not for shepherds, there would have been no reception. And were it not for stargazers, there would have been no gifts. Angels watched as Mary changed God's diaper. The universe watched with wonder as the Almighty learned to walk. Children played in the streets with him. And had he not known that the synagogue leader of Nazareth was listening to his sermon, I don't know, Jesus could have been tone deaf. Perhaps his knees were bony. Perhaps he had pimples. But one thing for sure, he was while completely divine, completely human. And for 33 years, he would feel everything you or I have ever felt. He felt weak, he grew weary, he was afraid of failure, he was susceptible to wooing women, he got colds, he burped, he had a body odor, his feelings got hurt, his feet got tired. And I know to think of him in such a light, it seems irrelevant, it's not something we like to do. It's much easier to keep the humanity out of the incarnation, clean the manure from around the manger, pretend that he never snored, I blew his nose, I hit his thumb with a hammer. I know he's much easier to stomach that way. But there's something about keeping him divine that keeps him distant. Packaged and unpredictable. Young people, don't do that. Don't do that. Let him be as human as he intended to be. Let him in to the mire and muck of our world. For only if we let him in can he pull us out. Listen to him. Love your neighbor. It came from one whose neighbors tried to kill him. The challenge to leave family for the gospel came from one who kissed his mother goodbye in the doorway. Pray for them that persecute you came from the lips that would soon be begging God to forgive his murderers. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That came from a God who did the impossible to make it all possible. Y'all, it happened in a moment. And I need to tell y'all this morning, there's about to be another moment. There's about to be another moment. This world is about to see another instantaneous transformation. You see, in God becoming man, he made it possible for man to see God. The Son of God became the Son of Man in order that the sons of men might become the sons of God. And when Jesus went back home to glory, the good news is he left the back door open. As a result, you and I, we're all going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The first moment went unnoticed by the world. But you can bet your sweet September, the second moment will not. Y'all can be driving along the highway. Thoughts wonder to some game you want to see, some meal you want to eat. When right here in Hawkins, Texas, you're going to hear a sound unlike any other sound you've ever heard in your life. What is that? A trumpet. Choir of trumpets. You don't know, but you want to know. So you're going to come out of your classrooms. You're going to come out of your dorms. Look at them. They're coming out of Walmart. They, they're coming out of restaurants. Trumpet. A choir of trumpets. The Little League baseball game across the street has just come to the halt. Parents and players are searching the sky. Professors and students. Staff is going to be searching the sky. And what they're going to see and what you're going to see has never before been seen. Look, look, look. It's as if the sky was a curtain. And the drapes of the atmosphere are going to part the sky. And a brilliant light is going to spill onto the universe. Spiking crystals of every hue ever seen. And millions more never seen. And look, riding on the flow will be an endless fleet of angels. They're going to pass through that curtain one myriad at a time until they occupy every square inch of the sky, the north, the south, the east, the west. Thousands of silvery wings are going to rise and fall in unison. And then over the sound of the trumpet, you're going to hear the cherubims and the seraphims chanting, Holy, 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 holy. With each word is a profound reverence and between each word is a distinct pause. Holy, holy. The final flank of angels will be followed by 24 silver-bearded elders. 
All of a sudden the trumpets will be silent, leaving only the triumphant triplet. Holy, holy, holy. And then you're going to hear your voice saying, holy, holy, holy. You don't know why you say the words, you just feel you got to say it. Holy, holy. Your girlfriend going to be saying holy. Your boyfriend going to be saying holy. Your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, they're going to be saying holy, holy. President Biden has to say holy. Vice President Kamala Harris has to say holy. Former President Trump, former President Clinton, former President Bush, they're all going to be saying holy. Putin has got to say holy. Drake has got to say holy. Lil Wayne going to say holy. <laughs> Nicki Minaj got to say holy. Eminem has got to say holy. Michael Jordan has got to say holy. Steph Curry. LeBron James is going to find out who the real king is. He's got to say holy. Bill Gates has got to say holy. Everybody just say holy. holy. Say it now because we're going to say it later. Holy. And then all of a sudden, all will be quiet. The angels are going to turn. You're going to turn. The entire world is going to turn. And there he is. There he is. He's going to be on top of a stallion. The stallion is going to be on top of a billowing cloud. There he is. Adam's redeemer, Abel's vindicator, Noah's ark, Abraham's sacrifice, Moses' bush on fire, Joshua's battle axe, Gideon's fleece, Samson's power, David's music, Solomon's wisdom. There he is, Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead, Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. There he is, Amos' plumb line, Malachi's son of righteousness risen with healing in his wing. There he is, the one who was born in poverty. Wise men brought riches to the lowliness of his cradle. The one who was born a helpless baby, but yet spoke spinning worlds into existence and sustains the mighty pillars of the universe by his own word. There he is, the one who was cradled in somebody else's crib, sailed in somebody else's boat, rode somebody else's animal, was buried in somebody else's tomb, and yet to him belong all the unsearchable riches of glory. There he is! The one Herod couldn't kill, the one Satan couldn't seduce, the one that sin couldn't stand, the one that sin couldn't withstand. There he is! He's going to open his mouth and he's going to speak. And he's going to tell the world, I'm Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He who was dead and now is alive forevermore. The elders are going to remove their crowns. The angels are going to bow. You're going to bow. Lil Wayne got to go down. Drake got to go down. JC, Jay-Z has got to go down. Beyonce, Kelly, and Michelle. <laughs> they got to go down. President Biden has to go down. Vice President Kamala Harris has to bow. Trump has to bow, the Bushes have to bow, the Clintons have to bow, the Carlos, they've got to bow. Michael Jordan has got to go down. Shaquille O'Neal, as big as he is, he's got to go down. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is his Lord. I wonder how do you feel if Jesus came right now? How would you feel? Something wrong with a child of God that doesn't get happy about the Lord coming to take you home. Can I get a witness here? Matter of fact, when I was driving here, the signs were letting me know 
how close I was getting to Jarvis Christian College. Jesus said, I'm not going to tell y'all when I'm coming, but I'm going to give y'all some signs. And the signs will let you know that his coming is not long. And what y'all seeing right now are signs that the Lord is on his way. Yeah, I'm closing now, but can I tell you one more thing? My daddy used to run a lot of revivals, and we would go with mama to take him to the airport. And I never will forget when we got to the airport. Yeah, we would hug daddy, and he would tell all 11 of us, y'all be on your best behavior don't let me hear that you've been acting up you take care of your mother and I'll see you sometime Saturday and we saw daddy go on and get on the plane but just as sure as daddy was gone I would act up at school I would be hard headed and I would hear my mother on the phone telling daddy everything I did. Your son Bertrand Jr. is hard headed. He got in trouble again. Now my daddy was a big man and while mama was telling on me I got some nerve and I said mama when you get through telling daddy everything I did can I talk to him? She said are you sure you want to talk to him? I said yes ma'am can I talk to him she passed me the phone and I said hey daddy he said I heard you did this I said I did I did that too yes sir I'm hard headed yes sir I acted up he said don't let me hear anything else I said okay daddy I gave mama the phone and I clicked my heels and I went to my room mama came in the room she said son you got a whole lot of nerve I said mama I'm not as dumb as you think I am I would rather fix it with daddy on the telephone than let him come back and my business is not fixed I'd rather work it out on the telephone than let him come back somebody here need to make a phone call Somebody here Need to call him up If we confess our sins God is faithful and just To forgive you of your sin And he'll cleanse you From all unrighteousness Call him And on Saturday When daddy came home When he hit the horn in the driveway I was able to run out to meet him Because I fixed it on the telephone one day another horn is going to blow some of y'all going to run to the rocks trying to hide your face rocks going to cry out no hiding place what you going to do I'm going to stand still I stand still Well, stand still. Are you ready for his coming? You know the sad thing? Sad thing? People going to hell over a gift. It's a gift. The wages of sin is death, the gift. 2 Corinthians 9 15. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a, you don't work for gifts. You don't earn gifts. You just receive gifts. I want to tell y'all, if you're over 12, you're at that age of accountability. Have you accepted God's gift? Jesus is that gift. He said the way to the Father is through me. That's the only way. And people going to hell and going to burn forever for rejecting a gift. 
You're not saved by what you do for him. You're not saved by coming to chapel. Being here, in here don't mean you're saved no more than being in a garage means you're a car. You have to accept his son. And we all understand that, because I got two sons. And guess what? You can't come in my house and reject my sons. I'm probably going to tell you go to hell. You can't come in my house and reject my son. And God is saying, you can't come in my home, heaven, and reject my son and what he did for you. And so today is a good day. If you haven't accepted his son, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we thank you just because everybody's at a Christian university. Everybody's Christian. That don't mean that. There was a guy playing baseball, and he knocked a home run, right? Bam, he knocked it out the park. He ran around first. He touched second. He touched third. He started on his way home. He touched home plate. The umpire said, you're out. He said, how can I be out? And I hit a home run. Where is that at? How can I be out and hit a home run? The umpire said, you hit a home run. You touched second and third. You didn't touch first. You out. And some of us were raised on second base. You were raised in the choir. You were raised ushering. Some of y'all are going to third. You're preaching now. You're evangelizing now. Some of you think you're in, but when you get touch home plate, God's going to say you're out. And you're going to say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick? He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You didn't touch first. You didn't accept my son as your Lord and Savior. You know what I found out, Sister Pruitt? God is a victim of identity theft. There's a whole lot of folk getting stuff in his name. They're getting popular in his name. They're getting fame and fortune in his name, and he don't know them. Today's a good day. Let me ask you something. Do you remember touching first? Do you remember accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you don't remember it, you probably didn't do it. And this is a good day to do it. Will you just lift up your hands with me? Just lift up your hands with me. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, Pray this with me, everybody. Dear Jesus, say it from your heart. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me even when I ignored you and went my own way. I realize I need you in my life. I'm sorry for my sins, the things I did and know I did, and the things I did and don't know I did. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse my life. Make me a new person inside. I receive your gift of salvation. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. Come into my heart. Make me a new person inside. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. I'm saved. If I don't wake up in the morning, I'll be at your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Beatty, for allowing the Lord to have his way today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. May we stand. We're going to sing.
May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. May the love of God be reflected through your hands. May the wisdom of God flow through your words that others might see. And in seeing, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Tell your neighbor, I got you on my mind. I got you in my heart. I got you in my prayers. Go with God, and he'll go with you. Say, neighbor, I holler.